Buenos dias. Say it back. Buenos dias. Thank you. Good morning. Well, I was so thrilled to be invited to, uh, to speak in this historic uh, venue. Uh, thanks so much for inviting me. I was asked to talk a little bit about the future, um, but given that this, and so I will, a little bit. I'm going to give you a tiny glimpse of the future, at least from my perspective. But I really wanted to talk about that in context. I wanted to talk a little bit about the story of SpaceX to inspire the entrepreneurs in the audience uh, to stick with crazy ideas, continue your dream, because eventually you'll get there, and then also to point out to the investors in the audience that crazy ideas can, can end up making big money. So we'll go ahead and start. A little bit about SpaceX. We were founded in 2002. I was the seventh employee, and we grew from this little tiny company to uh, a team of almost 5,000 people. Uh, we've grown between 50 and 100 percent year over year since then. Uh, like I said, we're almost at 5,000 people right now. For those of you entrepreneurs with your two or three compatriots just starting up, uh, it can get this big. And by the way, it's crazy. The path is crazy. We have eight billion uh, in revenue right now on the books. It's been an enormously successful company, so those ideas definitely pay off. Uh, we've had 18 successful Falcon 9 flights. Importantly, we did have a failure of our 19th flight this June. Um, I think it's still relevant to this audience because uh, I think in order to succeed, you do have to fail uh, and learn uh, and continue to grow your company. But let's be clear, failure super sucks. <laughs> Really, super sucks. Uh, we've had six successful missions to the International Space Station using the Dragon spacecraft, uh, and that is a little piece, a little glimpse of, uh, of the technology steps that we're taking to eventually take humans to Mars. That's why we were founded, purely to work the space transportation piece. So now I'm going to move to a video, I think. There we go. DC confirms flight computers in startup. Second stage pressing. Tanks are at flight pressure. F9 switching to internal power. T minus five, four, three, two, one, zero. Lift off of the Falcon 9. Falcon 9 is through the tower. Dragon capsule making its way towards the International Space Station. Cessation on two, we see Dragon at 20 meters. And capture is confirmed. Four, three, two, one, launch. I love, I love rocket videos. It's, uh, it's kind of the best way to get your heart pumping and blood flowing early in the morning here. So uh, putting in context, I wanted to show a photo of our, actually this is our second facility here on the left. It was this gigantic feeling garage space where we were going to start building rocket engines and rockets. Actually the first uh, location for SpaceX was in a hotel. 
uh, in downtown Los Angeles. So I was not part of the company at that time. But uh, seventh employee, we started at this giant space. Right now, that giant, what seems so giant, uh, is a teeny tiny like pin dot on the, the campus of SpaceX right now. It's about 10,000 square feet. Sorry, I don't know it in meters. Um, and now we're, uh, we're at about two and a half million square feet. Um, so really, this was 2002. We ended the year with 14 employees. So what have we been doing since then? What have we been doing since then? <laughs> we launched a little tiny rocket named Falcon 1. Took us three shots to get it right. Uh, and then we embarked on the path of taking uh, cargo to the International Space Station on the Falcon 9. Uh, those are the 19 flights that we have up there. We've been really busy. By the way, you aspiring entrepreneurs, very busy. Your life will be insane and incredible at the same time. So now 2015, let's fast forward to 2015 in a slow way. <laughs> Can we, there we go, 2015. So what do we have to do now? Uh, we would love to fly three more times. One, um, hopefully we get, that, uh, we get that done, but to fly at least two more times. Uh, that's the return to flight after the issue that we had in June. Uh, we did the pad abort test. Did you see that crazy, the Dragon spaceship lifting off the pad on that video? Um, that was all real time. Uh, that's to protect, this is a crew uh, demonstration. Basically, we're flying cargo to the International Space Station right now on Dragon. We're upgrading that Dragon spaceship so that we can take crew. And that video that you saw there was of the capsule getting off the pad in case the rocket blows up. You could see the, the capsule will get away uh, if the rocket blows up, up on the pad and the crew would be perfectly safe. So that was really an extraordinary test. And as I said earlier, we're going to end the year with about 5,000 employees. I know that's hard for you, for some of you to imagine, 5,000 employees with your, uh, with your little tiny three-person company right now, but hang in there. It can get that big. Next, next slide, please. So what's ahead? The glimpse of what I wanted to talk about is what are the, what are the things we need to do to still bring, uh, to get m massive amounts of folks to settle on Mars. So we have to make bigger rockets. We have to have more launch sites. Next slide, please. There we go. We, have, we need to have lots of launch sites. We can only get people to Mars every two years. So we need a lot of launch sites and a lot of rockets flying a bunch of people in that time frame. Um, so we're establishing two new launch pads, one in Central Texas, or excuse me, one in South Texas, and one at the historic Launch Complex 39A where the shuttle used to launch from. Next slide, please. What else is important? What are the other building blocks? So you have to have the ability, the place to launch the people from. Uh, but you also need to make sure that your rockets are reusable. Uh, right now, rockets are not like aircraft. You can imagine if you threw out the airplane, on your way from New York to Madrid, uh, that would be a very expensive flight and not many people would do it. Right now we throw our rockets away. It's critically important for us to be able to reuse those rockets. Otherwise, so you send people to Mars, that means you've thrown the rocket away, it's a one-way trip. You wanna be able to bring folks back from Mars as well in case they don't like it. <laughs> they might not like it, I don't know. Hopefully they like it. So what's really important is that we're developing the technologies to be able to reuse and recover these rockets. Next slide, please. Should be a video. So this is a video of that first stage of the Falcon 9 rocket landing on what looks like a little tiny ship, but it's bigger actually than a football field, American or European football. Um, and so we almost stuck the landing we didn't quite, but one of the things that I, I, I show this video, we tweeted it, so this is public. Sometimes we cut off the explosion part, but I thought it was important to show it here. <laughs> because in, at SpaceX, this was a huge success. No one's ever landed a rocket before after its mission. The fact that we landed the rocket, we didn't stick it. We weren't the great gymnast that stuck the landing, but we landed it and we hit that, what looked like a little tiny postage stamp in the middle of the ocean, we hit it. And so we were really, we were so thrilled that we did this. And in the United States, it was this huge victory. Yay, they almost sticked the landing. But in Europe, it was what a failure. They failed. 
And it's so important for an entrepreneurial environment to be able to accommodate risks. And on the development programs, you don't want to blow up your customers. For sure you don't want to do that. So failures on real missions, not great. They super sucks. I think that was the technical term I used earlier. But what, on the development programs, you want to be able to fail. You want to be able to push your pro products and your technology to make sure you know where the limits are so that you can provide a good service thereafter. So big success here. If you read that this was a big failure, they were totally wrong. This was a huge success. Next slide. So we have to, in order to get people to Mars, we have to make rockets reusable. This is part of the stepping stone technology. We also need much, much bigger rockets. Uh, the Falcon 9 is not going to take people to Mars. Falcon Heavy will take a Dragon capsule to Mars. Uh, but you need even a, a bigger rocket. But next year, in 2016, will we, we will be rolling out the Falcon Heavy launch vehicle. Between the Falcon 9 and the Falcon Heavy, we will accommodate all the satellites uh, that want to go to space. And it will be another stepping stone to an even much bigger rocket. Uh, this one is about 4 million pounds of thrust. Um, and the, mock, the vehicle that goes, takes us to Mars will be three or four times that size. So really, it will be a lot of noise at launch. Commercial crew. So right now, the Dragon capsule takes cargo to the International Space Station. We're learning how to do that. Now we're upgrading that capsule so that we can take people to low Earth orbit and the International Space Station. Again, that's another stepping stone because eventually we need to learn how to build spaceships that can take people all the way to Mars. And it's a long trip. Going to space station is a couple of hours, maybe a day if NASA wants you to sneak up on that. Getting to the moon is two or three days. Getting to Mars is three to eight months. So you can imagine how big that spaceship needs to be. You definitely don't want to go to Mars in the little Dragon capsule. It's like a minivan. It would be a bad eight months. <laughs> so I've talked about SpaceX from a little tiny company, seven people when I started, in what seemed like a giant building, which would now basically be the size of the bathrooms at SpaceX, um, to growing technology such that you can reuse rockets, to upgrading your cargo capabilities to be able to take humans. Um, and where, so where are we going to go next after that? We're, we definitely want to take people to Mars. Just want a quick show of hands. Who wants to go to Mars? Who wants to? OK. So when you ask that question at SpaceX, everybody raises their hand. <laughs> everybody raises their hand. At any rate, listen, good luck to all the entrepreneurs out there in the audience. Investors, listen to these people. They know what they're doing, and you can take what seems like a crazy idea, building rockets and spaceships to take people to Mars, into an $8 billion business. So thank you very much for your time and have a great week.